No matter what you're going through, I know that you can stand. For your life is in, in his hand.
what you're going through. His grace and mercy do it for him. He loves you. I know he does.
glory to God. Glory to you, Father. Hallelujah. When we are in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this morning. We thank you, Father, that you are with us this morning, that we found favor in your eyesight this morning because you have awakened us and prepared us for today, today's challenges, O oh Lord. We thank you, Father, for grace and peace and mercy upon our lives, O oh Lord. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit that is upon us now, O oh Father. We thank you, Lord God, that you give us understanding and enlightenment into your word and that you write your word upon the tables of our heart that we may not sin against you. Thank you, Yahweh, for all that you are doing, all that you have done and yet going to do. Thank you that you're all the while at work on the inside of us to do of your good will and pleasure. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. In the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, good morning, beloved. Good morning to you, hallelujah, on this Monday morning. All praises, all glory and honor goes to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords this morning. I tell you, beloved, yesterday... Um, I, I, uh, I attended a church service yesterday and I tell you, beloved, it was so powerful. The, ch uh, the name of the church is called the real and, uh, hallelujah. The, uh, apostle kept it real. You know, um, we must learn that we cannot just sit up under anyone because they invite us to their church. And uh, yesterday when I went to church to hear this message, it was so good, you guys. It, it was totally awesome. I said, hallelujah, a man of God that is speaking truth was not, he was totally in the spirit, totally the manifestation of the Holy Spirit operating through him. The anointing of the word of God that changes you, that causes you to remember God's word. Glory to God. When the anointing, when the Holy Spirit is in control, not man, but when the Holy Spirit is in control. And I, I was completely blessed on yesterday. And he talked about worship. What is true worship? That God is spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. If you're lying to your brothers and sisters, you cannot possibly be worshiping in truth. The um, message was really, really good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, we, we must sit up under people that we are able to learn something from. And I, I learned a little bit, little bit more about true worship some years ago, long, long time ago, when I was a member of Light Christian Fellowship Church. And, you know, and uh, that scripture would often come to me about spirit and in truth. That we are to worship God from our spirit man that has been infused with the Holy Spirit. And then we are to worship him in truth, our lifestyle. Uh, we are to walk a lifestyle of truth. If you are proud, haughty, thinking that you're all that, you're not worshiping in truth. Because none of those attributes belong to the Holy Spirit, but to the fallen nature. Today we're jumping back into our lesson 
on the Holy Spirit. We're on lesson chapter four in our um, Harvest Time International Manuals. And we are on lesson four of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And we're, we're, we're going to be talking about a, a variety of different topics about the Holy Spirit. And one of them is emotional experience. What the believer, hallelujah, go through when they are baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. If you, were, get, if you would get your swords and turn it to Acts chapter 13. Verse 52, Acts chapter 13 and verse 52. Emotional experience of the Holy Spirit. Another objection to tongues is that it is emotional. It is an emotional experience. Last time we met, we were talking about speaking in tongues, the evidence of speaking in tongues. And you know, God's word is established by two or three witnesses. And it's a number of occasions in the book of Acts where it talks about uh, the evidence of speaking in tongues, hallelujah, as well as baptism in water. You know, the word of God is established by two or three witnesses. Hallelujah, meaning more than just don't base your doctrine or theology on one scripture alone without cross-reference scriptures to back up what God is saying. Many believers who receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit emphasize their own emotional reaction to the experience. Man is an emotional creature Conversations to Jesus does not eliminate a man's emotions. Conversion to Jesus Christ does not eliminate a man's emotion. He will still experience joy and sorrow. Conversion frees man's emotions from the control of sin. It redirects these emotions to worship God. Now our emotions can be used in the proper, um, the proper function that God intended for them to function. And that is to be, to show him praise and worship. But these emotionals react. What? Uh, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm sorry my daughter wanted to ask me if she could hear, if I could hear the noise outside. But let's continue on. Okay, the word joy in scripture is closely associated with the Holy Spirit. Here in Acts chapter 13 verse 52, we are going to read that the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy, and the Holy Ghost, which reads... And the disciples were con continually filled throughout their souls with joy and the Holy Spirit. Continually. The Holy Spirit wants to continually fill you with joy. Hallelujah. Which is one of the fruits. Hallelujah. That he produces on the inside of you. Some people react with great emotion to the joy which comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit because they are naturally more emotional than others. They may shout, laugh, or experience sensations in their physical bodies. But these emotional reactions are not the sign of baptism in the Holy Spirit. But these emotional reactions are not the sign of a baptism in the Holy Spirit. The confirming sign is speaking in tongues. That is the confirming sign. The evidence is power. It is not necessary to show great emotions such as laughing, 
shouting, dancing, etc., to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. How one reacts emotionally to the joy this experience brings is often related to his individual emotions. So emotions is not proof or evidence that you have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. The main evidence is the evidence of speaking in tongues. But we should not criticize those who have joyful emotional reactions to the Holy Spirit. The Bible records emotional reactions of those who have had a powerful experience with God. People trembled, fell prostrate on the ground, shouted, rejoiced, and danced before God. And this is what was going on in church service yesterday. It was powerful. The presence of the Holy Spirit was operating in the believers at this ministry. Hallelujah. If there is no emotional reaction towards the presence of God, hallelujah, in worship, if your emotions are not stirred up, if your heart is not stirred up, while you're in the presence of God, something's wrong, beloved. There's no way that you can stand in the presence of God without showing some type of emotion. Just a teeny, teeny, not, we, we're not talking about a sour face emotion. Just, just not being touched at all. But we're talking about when the power of the Holy Spirit is stirred up on the believers in the house and it affects you. You know, it, it, the Holy Spirit is contagious. And we should desire all the works of the Holy Spirit on the inside of our hearts. Sometimes I cry, beloved, because I'm, I'm not crying because I'm sad, but I'm crying because I think about, I think about all the things that God has done for me. I think about all the mercy he has shown me. And then I get emotional and I cry. Sometimes I shout. Sometimes I dance. But it's because of the joy that is on the inside of me. Because I want to truly worship the Lord God because he is worthy to be praised. But we shouldn't criticize those that, that um, have a joyful emotional reaction to the Holy Spirit. The Bible records emotion reactions of those who had a powerful experience with God. People trembled, fell prostrate to the ground, shouted, rejoiced, and danced before the Lord. Now, in the early, in the early days of Life Christian Fellowship Church, hallelujah, we would rejoice, we would shout, we would fall prostrate before the ground, we would tremble, we would dance before the Lord God Almighty. And that is the power of of the true Holy Spirit in operation in every believer. And the Holy Spirit took us from different levels to different levels, from different realms in the Spirit. Hallelujah. And God wants to, He wants us to experience Him. In his fullness. It is in interesting to observe the emotional reaction of people to various athletic events. 
They will yell, laugh, jump up, down, and pr- express much excitement over a sports game. How much more excited we should be over a gift like the Holy Spirit, which accomplishes so many purposes in our lives, brings great joy, and equips us with power to reach the world with the gospel. Not only with um, the athletes, beloved, football. Everyone in America loves football. Football, especially Sunday night football, is on everybody's mind on Sundays. Hallelujah. When the Lord should be on our hearts and minds. Whether Saturday or Sunday. But I'm saying Sunday because that's usually when all the games are playing is on a Sunday. We should have the same excitement for football, for basketball, for soccer, for hockey, for any sport event that we like. Hallelujah. That we show emotions to In that event, we should have the same exact excitement, even more excitement, coming before the presence of God. Not having sourpuss faces. A lemon face. Hallelujah. Joy is one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit in a believer's life. And I tell you, beloved, there's no way that you can stand in the presence of an awesome God and just not be affected. I have been to churches where there is no emotional reaction with some of them. Hallelujah. Even if it's beloved, if you just just begin to think about all the things that God has brought you through. When you begin to think about all the mercy he has shown upon you, because none of us are perfect. None of us have, uh, have are walking, have walked a perfect Christian walk. God has showed mercy on us in our Christian walk. Many of us has fallen. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we got up to continue on. Many of us has made mistakes. There's no way possible that you can stand in the presence of a holy God, a powerful God, an awesome God, and not show any kind of emotion. Unless you are not truly touched by the Holy Spirit or even have the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Many of us have gods in our heart, other gods in our heart, other than the true Yahweh Elohim, the true and living God. And that is the God that we shall worship, the God of football, the God of basketball, the God of hockey, the God of soccer, the race car God. We may not live in a society where there are statues of the gods that we worship erected. But there are gods in our heart that we worship more than the true and living God. He should be number one, first and only in our minds and our thoughts and our heart. Anything you worship other than the living God, that is an idol. And this is what, you know, the the Holy Spirit wants to transform you into the image of Christ. But he's not going to force his self upon you. He's not going to force you to change. The psalmist David agreed in presence. (laughs) Excuse me. He presents a picture of joyful, loud, emotional worship of God. 
here in Psalms chapter 95, verse 1 through 3. Psalms. Hallelujah. Psalms 95, verse 1 through 3. And it reads, O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. He said, let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is great and a great king above all God. We're supposed to be full of noise. I remember uh, when uh, attending, being a member of uh, New Wine, New Wine Church under, uh, um, under Pastor Tom Bynum. I tell you, beloved, you talk about praise and worship. This man, this Pastor Tom Bynum was anointed with a strong anointing of worship. And when we came in the house, beloved, was not one soul was not worshiping God. It was, hallelujah, it was high praise. All in the house. All believers were affected by the awesomeness and power of God in his presence. There was always high praise when you are anointed by the Holy Spirit. When you allow the Holy Spirit to truly manifest himself through you. Glory to God. But we must allow him. We must pray and ask the Lord to give us a face as flint. That we won't look upon the people. That we won't even see the people. But that we will see him and him alone. See because praise and worship leaders. They lead the people into the presence of God. To receive the word. The rhema word. I'm going to repeat that. The praise and worship team. Are the ones that lead the people of God into the presence of God to receive the manna, the rhema word. But if the praise and worship leader is not worshiping in spirit and in truth, that affects everything. Our hearts must be right before the Lord. When it comes to praise and worship, when it comes to being on a prayer team, our hearts must be right before the Lord. We must worship him in spirit and in truth. If you're still dipping and dabbing into sin, you're not worshiping in spirit and in truth. I'll never forget, I was a part of a prayer team. Under uh, Prophet of Staple. And at that time God was still. I was be still being restored. I was not fully restored. But I was being restored. I had not yet fully been delivered. But I was being delivered. And she asked me if I wanted to be a part of the prayer team. I said, yes, I want God to use me. Hallelujah. Something had happened where I had, hallelujah, uh, kind of fallen a little bit. And I called and I told her that um, I won't be praying on the prayer team anymore. She could not understand why. I knew why and God knew why. I would not perpetrate being a liar before the people. Living something that I'm not, hallelujah, not doing. Being an example, hallelujah, 
to worship God in spirit and in truth. And I was not walking in truth at that time. And the Lord was dealing with me about that. So I told her, I called her and told her I won't be on the prayer team. At that time, that's when I first moved to California. My time, my time frame was completely off. One sister in the Lord thought I was completely lying about the time. And really, it confused me. I didn't know if we was ahead or backwards. It took me, hallelujah, I wasn't down here in California the first time that long. But the second time I came down here, it took me a whole entire year, hear me, with, for, for me to get the time right. The time frame here, we are two hours ahead of the cities that are in a, a central time. We are Pacific time. It took me one year for that to clock into my head. But I tell you, when we don't, when people don't refuse to search and get lack of understanding, I mean, they judged me. One sister got real mad and upset with me. Had no compassion. None. At all. I'm thinking that I was coming down here. Not only to assist her, but that to get healing and receive healing. It did not happen that way, beloved. I mean, I was so bad. Ooh, Lord, a spirit of, a spirit of, um, a spirit of, um, suicide was upon me. I shared it with this young lady who claimed, quote unquote, that she loves me out of her mouth. But when I shared this with her, her comment was, I can't deal with that. I don't have time for that. I mean, this woman was cold. No love, no compassion at all. But this is one that calls on the name of the Lord. This is an example of not worshiping in spirit and in truth. How can you not have compassion for one that is a child of God that is being attacked by a spirit of suicide and make a comment like that. You're not walking in truth. You are not walking in truth. Glory to God. So uh, next time that I went on, let's just listening to the broadcast of uh, Prophet Sta Staple. Next thing you know, I'm a Saul. Next thing you know, I'm a Saul, you guys. First of all, God didn't command me to even be on the prayer team. Hallelujah. That was the decision that I made. Second of all, it was another decision when God started to deal with me that, that I cannot still be doing what I was doing and, pr uh, and praying before people, leading people into prayer. I'm living a lie now. This, this prophetess could not understand that. I didn't feel comfortable enough to explain to her why I, I couldn't be on the prayer team. Everything that we do, beloved, will affect us in the spirit realm as well as in the natural. And I did not want to be, I didn't want to be a curse unto anybody. I don't want to be a curse unto anyone. Perpetrating, saying that I'm this and I'm not. Wearing a cloak or a mask over my face. Hallelujah. And, and, and I'm doing something wicked. We must keep things real with God, for real. We, do, we must keep things real with God. I can't say that I'm walking in truth if I'm cussing my brother or my sister out. 
I can't say that I'm walking in truth if I'm praying against them and speaking evil things about them. I cannot possibly be walking in truth. I, matter of fact, I can't. That that is not the Holy Spirit. We are to worship God in spirit and in truth. Psalms 150 verse 3 and through 6 reads, Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the palstry and harp. Praise him with the tambourine and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Now you have some ministries, which I believe are cults, hallelujah, believe that having instruments, praising God with instruments is of the devil. For real. You have some ministries that are teaching their people listening to music is of the devil. Uh, having instruments in the church, that's not of God. Beloved, we need to know the word for ourselves so that we would not be deceived. We do not have to fear the baptism of the Holy Spirit because we, you do not have to fear the baptism of the Holy Spirit which will cause you to do something improper or lose control of yourself. Now, when you see in folks jumping over pews, acting like animals, doing all doing flips and stuff like that, doing all kind of crazy stuff, that is not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not going to let you lose control. He's not going to cause you to do something that's improper. Jumping over pews is improper. Barking like a dog is improper. Uh, uh, demonstrating yourself like an animal is not the Holy Spirit, beloved. It's just simply not. Doing crazy stuff is not the whole. Uh, is not. Is not the Holy Spirit. Paul said there was times to keep silent and hold your peace in regards to speaking in tongues. First Corinthians. Read First Corinthians chapter fourteen. He would not make these statements if the Holy Spirit caused people to be out of control. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 32, And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. The spirit, talking about the spirit man, is subject of the spirit man of the prophets are subject to another prophet. This means that any gift God gives is subject to or under the control of the user. Let me repeat that. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 32. I want to read that out of the Amplified Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the spirits of the prophets, the speakers in tongues, are under the speaker's control and subject to being silenced as may be necessary. You have control. You have control. This means that any gift of God, any gift of God that God gives is subject to or under the control of the user. God does nothing improper for 1 Corinthians 44, uh, 14 verse 33 says, For he who is the source of their prophesying is not a God of confusion. And disorder, but of peace and order, as is the practice in all the churches of the saints, God's people. God is not a God of disorder. He is a God of order. 
And when there's disorder in the house, when there's confusion in the house, when there is fighting and bickering in the house, the spirit of the Lord is not there. Hallelujah. Receiving the Holy Spirit. The following are guidelines for receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. One, repent and be and be baptized. Let's go to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 verse 38, which reads, And Peter answered them, Repent, change your views and purpose to accept the will of God in your inner selves instead of rejecting it, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of and release from your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are to repent and be baptized. To believe it is for you. Acts chapter 2, we're still in Acts chapter 2 verse 39. For the promise of the Holy Spirit is to and for you and your children, and to and for all that are far away, even to even to and for as many as the Lord our God invites and bids to come to himself. The Holy Spirit is for every believer. We must believe that it's for us. That is not for special people. It's for every born again believer. Three, we must desire it. Turn your swords to John chapter 7. John chapter 7 verse. We're going to read uh, verse 37 to 39. That's John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. We must desire to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If you do not desire it, he will not force himself upon you. It reads out the Amplified. Christ reveals the living water. That's the title in my Bible. He says, verse 37, Now on the final and most important day of the feast, Jesus stood and he cried in a loud voice, if any man is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts in and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. But he was speaking here of the Spirit, whom those who believed, trust, trusted, and had faith in him were afterward to receive. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given, because Jesus was not yet glorified, raised to honor. We must desire to be infused and baptized with the Holy Spirit. We must desire it. We must understand that the apostles were not filled with the Holy Spirit yet. But Jesus often reminded them and told them that I would send another comforter and that he would be in you, that he would dwell with you. He would never leave you. Here he's talking about the living water. Anyone that is thirsty, let him come and drink. Here the, water, the Holy Spirit is represented as flowing water. To come and quench our thirst. Our spiritual thirst. Um, four. <clears throat> Accept it as a gift. We must accept the Holy Spirit as a gift. The Holy Spirit has already been given. It was given to the church on the day of Pentecost because it is a gift. You can do nothing to earn it, beloved. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 reads the gift of the Holy Spirit. Galatians, if you would, turn your swords to Galatians chapter 3. 
we're going to read verses 2, verses 5, and verse 14. And it reads out the Amplified Bible. Let me ask you this one question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit as the result of obeying the law and doing its works? Or was it by hearing the message of the gospel and believing it? Was it from observing a law of rituals or from a message of faith? Hallelujah. Paul is asking questions. Verse 5. Then does he who supplies you with his marvelous Holy Spirit and works powerfully and miraculously among you do so on the grounds of your doing what the law demands or because of your believing in and adhering to and trusting in and relying on the message that you heard. Let's jump down to verse 14. To the end that through their receiving Christ Jesus the blessing promised to Abraham might come upon the Gentiles so that we through faith might all receive the realization of the promise of the Holy Spirit. As we read in our last lesson, beloved Cornelius and his household, they were Gentiles. But they were, Cornelius was serving the true and living God. He was worshiping the truly living God. Hallelujah. They were Gentiles. The Gentiles in Jesus' day were Greeks. Hallelujah. The Gentiles in Jesus' day, they were the Greeks. Glory to God. And Cornelius' household was, was serving the living God. He, the, the Cornelius was following, hallelujah, the majestic law. He was following, he, he knew the true and living God, I'm trying to say. And because he knew the tr true and living God, because he worshiped the true and living God, when Peter was sent to his house, and while Peter was yet talking about Jesus, sharing the gospel, the Holy Spirit fell on them and they all was baptized with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Well, how did you how did Peter know that they were baptized in the Holy Spirit because they started to speak in tongues. And if you continue to read later on, Cornelius household, Cornelius and his household all were baptized afterwards. Begin to praise and thank God for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Six, yield to God. Yield your tongue to God in praise and worship. As you praise him audibly, you may first experience stumbling lips. As you continue to yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit, and he will speak through you words foreign to your understanding. This is the confirming physical sign of of the Holy, the Holy Spirit baptism. Isaiah chapter 28 verse 11 reads, For what, for which stumbling lips in another tongue will he speak to this people? Acts chapter 2 verse 4, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Request the prayers of other believers. Turn your swords to Acts, uh, Acts chapter 8. We're going to read verses 9 and 19. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit can be received through the lying on of hands here in Acts chapter 8, verse 9 reads, But there was a man named Simeon who had formerly practiced magic arts in the city to the other amazement of the Samaritan nation, claiming that he himself was an extraordinary and distinguished person. 
This is Acts chapter 8, verse 9. Let's go down to verse 17. We're going to read the whole thing. So you're going to understand why he started out with this. Simeon was a sorcerer. He was dealing in black magic. There are sorcerers, witches, in the church today, beloved. There are sorcerers and witches in the church today. They are not baptized with the Holy Spirit, the true Ruah Hakadosh Spirit. They're baptized with another type of spirit, but it's not the true Holy Spirit. They all paid earnest attention to him from the least to the greatest, saying this man is the exib ex exhibitation of the power of God, which is called great, in which is called great intense. Now they call and they saying that this the power that this man is operating through is from the power of God. And they were attentive and made much of him because for a long time he had amazed and bewildered and dazzled them with his skill in magic arts. But when they believed the good news, the gospel about the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ the Messiah, as Philip preached it, they were baptized both men and women. Even Simeon himself believed. Even Simeon himself believed. He adhered to, trusted in, and relied on the teaching of Philip. And after being baptized, once again, these people were baptized after they believed in the gospel. Uh, after being baptized, devoted himself constantly to him and seen signs and miracles of great power, which were being performed. He was utterly amazed. The Bible said that Simeon believed the gospel and was baptized and he stuck close to Philip. He began, he began to see the power of God. Verse 13, even Simeon himself believed. Verse 14, now when the apostles, special messengers at Jerusalem, heard that the country of Samaria had accepted and welcomed the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Hallelujah. Verse 15. And they came down and prayed for them that the Samaritans might receive the Holy Spirit. For he had not yet fallen upon any of them, but they had only been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Verse 17. For then the apostles laid their hands on them one by one and they received the Holy Spirit. Verse 18, however, when Simeon saw that the Holy Spirit was imparted through the line on of the apostles' hands, he brought money and offered it to them. Simeon coveted the power of the Holy Spirit. Mind you, he believed the gospel. He was baptized. But what he did was a great sin. Verse uh, 18. Verse 19 saying, Grant me also this power and authority. He had the wrong attitude. The wrong attitude. The wrong heart. In order that anyone on whom I place my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, destruction overtake your money and you, because you imagined you could obtain the free gift of God with money. If someone is asking for money, hallelujah, if someone beloved, this is another sign that you could tell a false, a false apostle, false prophet. If they're asking you to give money to receive a prophecy, that's not of God. 
The Lord God told us to give willingly. If you are buying prophecies, be careful. Simeon, Simeon's heart was not right. <clears throat> he was going to take this gift. He, his intention was so that he can use it as a, as a means of finances, generating finances. His heart was not right. For Peter said to him, destruction overtake your money and you. Glory to God. Because you imagined you could obtain the free gift of God with money. You have neither part nor lot in this matter. For your heart is all wrong in God's sight. It is not straightforward or right or true before God. Hallelujah. <coughs> so repent of this depravity and wickedness of, of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this contriving thought and purpose of your heart may be removed and disregarded and forgiven. Simeon's heart was not right. God knows those who truly believe and who are, tr who are truly baptized. God knows. And here is an example that people can pretend. Hallelujah. The Bible says that Simeon believed and that he was also baptized. But his heart was not changed. He told Peter, told him, so repent of this depravity and wickedness of yours and pray to the Lord that if possible, this constriving thought and purpose of your heart may be removed and disregarded and forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and in a, bo a bond forged by iniquity to feather souls. Simeon answered Peter, answer, pray for me, be beseech the Lord, both of you, that nothing of what you have said may befall me. Now when the apostles had brought their testimony and preached the message of the Lord, they went back to Jerusalem proclaiming the glad tiding, tidings gospel to many villages of the Samaritans on the way. Simeon, hallelujah, besought them to pray for him. That nothing of what they had said, Peter had said, may befall him. He did not repent. Peter told him to repent. He did not repent. He did not have a change of heart. Hallelujah. Nothing else uh, concerning Simeon was mentioned ever again in uh, the book of Acts. Uh, but we must yield to God. We must yield to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We must yield our tongues, hallelujah, to the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We must request the prayers of other believers to assist us in the, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit. Or without the lying on of hands, go to Acts chapter 2. Hallelujah. You can receive the Holy Spirit via by... Hallelujah, a leader in authority laying hands upon you, or you can have the experience of the day of Pentecost that the, uh, the, uh, the disciples had in the upper room on the day of Pentecost. Acts chapter 2 verse 4 reads out the Amplified, and they were all filled, diffused throughout their souls with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other different foreign languages, tongues. As the Spirit kept giving them clear and loud expression in each tongue in, op, 
in oper- appropriate words. Let's jump down to verse 10 of us uh, Acts chapter 2. Pyra and um, Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya about Siren and the transit resistance from Rome, both Jews and the Protestants to Judaism from all other religions. Cert, uh, certain and Arabims Air, too, we all hear them speaking in our own native languages and telling of the mighty works of God. There is tongues and then there's unknown tongues. Hallelujah. Study these chapters which show how spirit-filled believers can help you experience baptism in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Importance of the experience. Baptism in the Holy Spirit is important because it enables you to become a powerful witness of the gospel message. For in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria." And unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Mark chapter 16. Verse 17 through 18. Jesus says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not be it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, and these things shall follow them. In Jesus name shall they cast out devils. In Jesus name they shall speak with new tongues. We are promised the Holy Spirit, beloved. Speaking in tongues is a sign of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit also gives special spiritual gifts and develops spiritual fruit in our life. These gifts and fruits are the subject of the remaining chapters of the study, which we're going to pick up. Hallelujah. Good morning to you, Sister Blue. Which we are going to pick up, hallelujah, on our our next study. Talking about the, the different gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is mentioned 85 times in the Old Testament. As we read the Old Testament, as you begin to read the Old Testament, beloved, circle each mention of the Holy Spirit. He is a very important, uh, uh, he, was, he, he was very important in the work of God and in his plan. This study will help you to understand his ministry before the New Testament times, how he operated and how he worked in Old Testament times. If you completed the similar assignment for the New Testament given in ch- lesson two of our study, you will have a complete study of the Holy Spirit Marked right in your Bible. As you're reading, I would suggest that you read the New Testament first. Circle the mention, the operation of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament. And then go and read the New Te- the Old Testament and circle each mention of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is given as a fulfillment of of promises which dated back to Old Testament times. Here are some scriptures that you can study, beloved, on your own, t- on your own time concerning the promise of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I am, Sister Blue. <laughs> now, um, I have actually gotten over the cold. 
But now, hallelujah, it's just the uh, my hay fever, all the dust, hallelujah, it, all the dust that be blowing here in California. You know, it's cold and then it's hot. Today is cold. So I'm going to have to bundle up when I go out. Glory to God. Old Testament. Here are some scriptures for you guys to study about the, the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Holy Spirit that is mentioned in the Old Testament. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 and 12. Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29. Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3. Matter of fact, let us go there now, beloved. Hallelujah. And then uh, we're going to... Um, let's go there now. Isaiah chapter 28. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11 and 12. It reads, No, but the Lord will teach the rebels in a more humiliating way. By men with stumbling lips... And another tongue will he speak to this people, says Isaiah, and teach them his lessons. To these complaining Jews, the Lord had said, This is the true rest, the way to true comfort and happiness that you shall give to the weary. And this is the true refreshing, yet they would not listen to his teaching. Let's jump to Joel. Chapter 2, Joel chapter 2, verse 28 and 29, which reads out the Amplified Bible. And they definitely have a, he, they have a, a subject title here. Events before the terrible day of the Lord, the day of the Lord. Verse 28 reads, and afterward, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Even upon the men servants and upon the maid servants. In those days will I pour out my spirit. This promise, beloved, is for those that believe, hallelujah, and receive the gift of salvation. God has promised in the Old Testament, hallelujah, that he was going to pour up on, pour his spirit out upon all flesh. In the Old Testament, it was certain men and women that God picked out to pour his spirit out upon. Hallelujah. But in the latter days after Jesus Christ's glorification, God promised that he was going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And if you are born again believer... This gift have been promised to you. Now it's up to you on whether you want to receive it or not. Hallelujah. Let's go to, let's jump to Isaiah chapter 44 and verse 3. Isaiah chapter 44 verse 3. And it reads out the Amplified Bible. For I will pour water upon him who is thirsty. Remember, water represents the Holy Spirit and floods upon the dry ground. God is going to pour that water in you. Hallelujah. I will pour my spirit upon your offspring and my blessing upon your descendants. And they shall spring up among the grass like willows or pop poplars poplars by the water courses one will say i am the lord's and another will call himself by the name of jacob and another will write even brand a or a tattoo upon his hand i am the lord's and surname himself by the honorable name of israel the promise of the holy spirit is spoken of in the old testament that in the latter times, God was going to pour up His pour out His Spirit. Hallelujah! The Holy Spirit also represents water, and those who are thirsty, let them come and drink. You must desire and want the Holy Spirit. You must desire and want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. God wants to bless you. Hallelujah. 
God wants to bless you. When we were born again, beloved, God, the breath of God came up on, in us. He breathed life into our spirit. We go back to Genesis where God created Adam and it says that God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. The Holy Spirit represents the breath of life. And man became a living soul. He became connected and infused to God in that moment, in that second, in that time. When you receive, when you are born into this world without God, you do not have the spirit of God dwelling on the inside of you. Your spirit is dead, disconnected from God because of the fall that Adam did in Genesis chapter 3. When you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, when you believe the gospel, confess your sins, repent, and is baptized when you identify yourself in his his death, his burial, and his resurrection through baptism. Hallelujah. God once again comes and breathe the breath of life into you. Jesus illustrated this point when he met the disciples in the upper room and he breathed on them. He said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the breath of life. Hallelujah. There is a difference between receiving the breath of life and being baptized with power. There is a difference. But every born again believer that received Christ the Messiah, received the gift of salvation and is baptized. And once you are raised out of the water, believe it or not, beloved. God breathes the breath of life into your soul, man, and, it and, and, and he reactivates it. It becomes alive again unto God. God gave me a revelation and understanding about what actually happened in the garden, hallelujah, with Adam when he fell. And he connected that with what Jesus was speaking to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. That you must be born again of water and the spirit. Nicodemus thought that Jesus was saying that a man must enter his mother's womb. No. Other words, your spirit man must be born again of water, baptism, and the Holy Spirit. Being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Being infused with the Holy Spirit. God must breathe into your soul, man, and your spirit. And bring life once again back to what he originally created in Genesis chapter 2. Before the fall. When Adam fell... God told him that you would die and in dying you would die. He thought that he was going to drop dead just like that. But it didn't happen that way. His spirit man was reborn. Hallelujah. To death. Hallelujah. He inherited death. Later on. Adam died at 999, I believe, years old. But that union, that connection, hallelujah, that glory that was on Adam was severed. It was severed. The relationship between him and God was severed way before God put him out of the garden. Some are teaching that his relation was severed after God put him out of No, his relationship was severed. Suffered the instant he bit the fruit. And it doesn't say that it was an apple, beloved. It don't say that. It didn't say what type of fruit it was. All we know is that it was a tree that had fruit on it. Hallelujah. 
the instant Adam took a bite out of that fruit, his relationship was severed. The glory of God that was upon Adam and Eve departed. The Holy Spirit departed. Each and every one of us, beloved, was born into death. We were born sinners from the get-go. Jesus Christ came to be that once and for all sacrifice to redeem man back unto God once and for all. Thank you, Father. And in receiving Christ as your Lord, your Savior, your King, confessing your sins before God, repenting and identifying yourself in Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection through baptism in water. When you are raised up out of the water, you're raised as a new creature in Christ Jesus. God breathes the breath of life once again back into you to bring your spirit man and your soul back into fellowship with him. then we must ask God for the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can be witnesses for him. Glory to God. New Testament, John chapter 7, verse 38 to 39. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse 16 through 18. John chapter 15, verse 26, John 16, verses 7 through 11, Acts chapter 1, verses 4, 5, and 8, Acts chapter 2, verse 30, read the whole book of Acts chapter 2, Galatians chapter 3, verse 14, and Luke chapter 24, verse 49. Have you received the gift of the Holy Spirit, beloved? Have you experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit? If you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, reread or listen to the guidelines in this particular chapter, chap lesson four, <coughs> and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit by faith. You can receive the Holy Spirit right where you're at. Just believe and receive it. Hallelujah. Review the purpose of speaking in tongues. Review the purposes of speaking in tongues. Tongues is a manifestation or a sign of the Holy Spirit. And review the objections to speaking in tongues. Hallelujah, which we had already discussed in this lesson. Think about how you will respond the next time you hear one of these objections raised. What would you say? The Holy Spirit is a promise unto all those that receive the gospel of Christ the Messiah. All those that receive the free gift of salvation and are born again of what in the Spirit. It belongs to you. The Holy Spirit was promised. It is the gift of God. Ask and receive it. Believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, we're going to close out right now. Hallelujah. We're going to close out right now. Father, we just thank you. Father, we just thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace, O oh Lord. We thank you for the, the promised gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that when we were born again, Lord, that you breathed the breath of life into us and we became living souls, O oh Lord. Once we were dead, but now we are alive in you, Father. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah for all the listeners. Thank you, Father, that they have received the gift of salvation that they have received the gift of the holy spirit and that they are living their lives and walking in power and authority 
hallelujah, through the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your word on today. Thank you for the lesson of the ministry of the Holy Spirit because we need him in our lives. Thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in the midst of your people. Thank you, Lord, that 2018 is new beginnings for your people. Thank you, Father, that you're stirring up the hearts of your people, Father, to begin again over. Thank you that you are awakening the, the, the believers, Father, that you are causing them to be awakened, that they're waking up, oh, Father. But we are definitely living in the last days, oh, Father. We thank you. In the name of your Son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, Amen and amen. Well, beloved, I want to share this information with you. I sent this, I believe I sent this information to you also, Sister Blue. They are now installing chips into workers overseas. The devil is so slick and cunning that they hallelujah, convince these people, these workers, to receive the chip in their hand. It is a small, thin, it's really small, that they place in your hand. Beloved, this is the mark of the beast. Hallelujah. We seem to think that the Bible is not true. We are living. We are actually living in the manifestation of God's promise he said these things were going to take place in the book of revelation but they are introducing this chip in the workforce yeah size a piece of rice they are introducing this chip into the workforce not to the general public yet but to the workers the workforce those in, 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 hallelujah, in offices and things like that. This chip is being introduced overseas right now as I speak. I'm telling you, beloved, my heart is, hallelujah, so grieved for so many of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Because of the love of the world. Because of the love of things, because of the love of man and money, many are going to fall into this trap to receive this chip. See, because without the chip, beloved, you cannot buy or receive anything. You can't buy or sell anything when this chip is in full force. God is not playing. Satan definitely is not playing. Do not receive the chip. And Sister Blue said that this chip can also change your DNA. She said she heard. But beloved, you receive this chip, which is the mark of the beast. There is no coming back to God. There is no repentance for it. No second or third chances. You know how when we fall into sin, we can, we can get uh, the Holy Spirit comes to pick us up and we can repent and ask for forgiveness and God cleanses and washes us. If you receive this chip, that it's a done deal. Game over for you. Game over. Because you chose the system of this world, which is the system of Satan. Hallelujah. My heart is grieved because of uh, so many saints uh, in love with things, with possession of love connected to this world. Many people want to have businesses and this and that, want to have all this money. But I tell you what, beloved, without that chip, 
you cannot buy anything and you will not be able to sell anything. Whatever line of work you in, whatever business you want to have, without the chip, you cannot buy or sell anything. You must have the chip. Hallelujah. Paper money is going to be non-existence pretty soon in a couple of years. Beloved, now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to prepare yourself. And I'm going to give you some wisdom. Now is the time to invest in some land. Hallelujah. Now is the time to invest in some land. And I'm not talking about land in the city. I'm talking about land in the country. It's now time for believers to begin to set themselves up to live like the Amish do. The Amish live off the land. Even though their doctrine is not correct. correct, They're not correctly connected to God the Father. But they're living off of the land. It is time, beloved. Now is the time. Hallelujah. To prepare. Glory to God. Many believe in the pre-rapture. That ain't even in the Bible. Many believe in the post-rapture. Hallelujah. What difference does it make? If you're not prepared and ready, you're not going to be taken anyway. If you receive the chip, you're not going to be taken anyway. Now is the time. Hallelujah. We don't want to be like the ten foolish virgins. Hallelujah. They didn't put, la- they, they didn't put any oil in their lamps. They were not, they was not repaired, prepared for the groom when he came. Now is the time. Now is the time, beloved, to see God like you never saw him before. Now is the time. And and now is the time for you to minister to as many people as you can. This thing is real. It is real. And we are living it out, Sister Blue. Biblical prophecy is coming to pass as we sit here. For you people that think that God is not real. Oh, the Bible's not true. Read Revelations. Whether you are a believer or not, read Revelations. You will see that we are living biblical prophecy out in the book of Revelation. Now is the time, beloved, to get it right. 2018 is new beginnings new chance to get it right well may God bless you may God keep you may God's face shine upon you as you continue to seek his face by sitting at his feet and learning from him until then beloved may God bless you and may God keep you shalom to that.